Now, the other thing I was wanting to do here, as far as measuring, is I kind of wanted to <clears throat> go through and just start picking out some various measuring tools we've got here. We're talking about measuring. What, what do we got? How does this work? How does that work? Uh, the calipers I was using, and I tend to just buy cheap calipers because if it needs to be accurate, I use a micrometer. With the caliper, you can get pretty good results on the inside of the jaws here. You do have to make sure that you're square with whatever you're measuring. Your inside measurements, these are very seldom really accurate. So if you're looking for a more accurate measurement on something inside, we go to a telescoping gauge. Telescoping gauge goes through a round item, like this absolutely perfect piece of tape that we just found. So if we want to measure just exactly what it is, you lock it lightly, and again, find something that has a known size that you can measure and compare about against. What you do, when this would be in a regular piece of tubing, you draw it through one time, let it self-center, imagining that you are trying to pivot around the one held end and let the second one center and push it in to its smallest point. Then you can take it, even without going to a micrometer, you can take it, use your calipers and feel to where the caliper moves out the furthest amount. And that'll give you a pretty good measurement on these. Um, another way of measuring with these is a step measurement. A lot of people don't notice that right off. If you want to measure uh, the depth of something, then uh, I want to measure to that shoulder. We can do it, of course, which is really easily noticed. You can do it with the depth gauge that's on the back here. And you can go like that. And depending on how square you hit the item, you come up with a measurement for your depth that way. But it's also from here to here is also an equal. So you can come up there and come up against it on that part and that gives you a real nice measurement. They call these a four-way caliper. That's something that came about mostly in the 80s. I kind of think it was there in the late 70s, but it wasn't everywhere. By the time 90s hit, even the cheapest of these had the four-way measuring option. Uh, Mitatoyo was the first one that I remember having that in, but uh, it could have been somebody else. Um, well, we can go through our stuff here. We have Multiple calipers. There's where the nicer 12-inch ones I would have been looking for earlier. Play with, but old school, old old school. Inside calipers, little uh, feet there. You adjust these. You use these by feel inside of a bore, and then you can you can actually measure these with a micrometer. I'm not that good. Um, sometimes you want to use stuff like this. So you can get into a place that you otherwise can't get into. It reaches down a ways. They make a version of this, which I don't think I have any of, that has a dial indicator back here. So you can actually set this with a ring gauge, and then this will move. And by a ring gauge, I mean a precision piece of steel, precision round that you know what the diameter inside is. That's a ring gauge. Um, usually I don't have ring, I don't think I have any ring gauges. We make some by carefully uh, turning them, grinding them. You, you're not going to be any more accurate than the ring itself, but you can make some yourself also. You can take, normally with a ring gauge, you're setting up a more accurate tool that might have multi-point contact. Instead of just two, it might have three contacts, and we could get into that in a little bit too. Inspection mirrors. These work real good, to, <coughs> of course, with indicators. You're using an indicator, dialing something in. I think most of you can see the reason for that. It just gives you a way to see it. And this, of course, is uh, we took a chunk of steel and we put a, um, this was an probe for an in for a, a milling machine it's supposed to go in a milling machine spindle we made a one inch i'm sure that is because that was what fits most of our boring heads the, the more common ones of course you've also got uh, coordinate measuring machines of a sense built on some of the machines that we've put the readouts on and part of uh people asked me a long time when i first started up here 
why don't you have readouts on all your machines? And I still don't have them on all the machines. And the reason was that for every two or three readouts I didn't buy at that time, I could buy a whole nother machine. And I was starting out. Your, your money can only go so far. When I buy a new machine at this point, you bet you it's already mounted up on there. We don't have to mess with it. It's the way to go. Um, they're way less expensive now. When I first started out, buying a readout for one of these was eight grand. Um, now, if you go to buy one, it's 1200 you know, so it made sense not to buy them when I started. When people were picking on me, they were down around 3000 um, but still I was at a point where it just didn't make sense yet to buy them and start putting them on. Now I've got ones I bought that we haven't put on. So, more about measuring stuff. In fact, this one here, this boring building, we have one of the scales mounted. For the x-axis, we have the y-axis partially mounted, and we don't have anything for the z-axis yet. 